You know, life is so precious. Every second of every hour of every day is to be enjoyed, to be cherished. And yet, 267 million Indian adults will sacrifice 10 years of their life for consuming one product, and that is tobacco. Tobacco is the single leading cause of death in the world. It causes all kinds of diseases, from pulmonary to cardiac, even impotence. 50% of all cancers are caused by tobacco. Now, you know, we know some of the cancers are reasons why cancer is caused. We don't know a lot of why a lot of cancers are caused, such as breast cancer, brain cancer. But 50% of cancers are caused by tobacco, 90% of oral cancers, 90% of lung cancers. You know, tobacco kills more people than alcohol abuse, drug usage, road accidents, HIV put together. In the last century, 100 million people died because of tobacco. And in this century, unless something is done about it, 1 billion people will die, 80% of them in the developing world. So I've been working in tobacco control for the last seven years. And you know, there are many ways we try to control the usage of tobacco. These are evidence-based, such as no smoking in public places, no advertising and promotion, no sale to and by minors, pictorial warnings on the packet, and of course, raising taxes. But one fact, you know, really hit us data point, and which was that 90% of tobacco users start in their teens. And this is going to ask the question some of you have been dreading. How many of you use tobacco? There you go. Well, the bad news is that only 3% of the people who use tobacco will be able to give it up in all their lives. The good news for those of you using it is that this is a perfect time for you to stop because later it will become more and more difficult. Now, given this only 3% people are able to give it up, it seems obvious that it's better to stop people from starting tobacco than to pursue everybody all their lives, you know, to give it up. So we thought that we needed to work tools. I had a great example. For the last three, 30 years, they've been running a campaign in schools to get people to stop using tobacco. Almost every school in Goa has two or three teachers who are champions against tobacco. Now, you know, we have, all of us have this image of Goa as a free place, you know, you can drink and smoke. But the fact is that Goa has the lowest prevalence rates of tobacco usage in the country. Their prevalence usage is one third the national average. So we decided to have a look at schools. Now, the big challenge with schools is the sheer numbers. Maharashtra has 100,000 schools, Madhya Pradesh schools. The whole country, there are 1.4 million schools. Quite clearly, we can't go to all of them. So we have to work with the government. And to work with the government, we needed not to just know the law, but we also needed to understand the processes of how the government works. And then we needed a good monitoring system. We all know how difficult it is to get a new system up and going, especially in a large organization like the government. So we decided to build systems, piggyback them on existing systems, and try and embed, embed our requirements into existing systems that would also ensure good sustainability. But you know, the biggest challenge of all was how do you get the government to move? Governments are large, monolithic, huge ownership, and getting them to take up any new program is a major challenge. Education departments themselves have, with all these number of principles, just getting a communication out to all of them is difficult, let alone trying to get them to move on certain action. So what we felt 
was that sensitization and advocacy would be the key. We needed to raise the priority of this issue among the government, specifically the education department. And for this, we used the help of doctors and patients. We started a campaign called the Voice of Tobacco Victims. We, doctors would take patients, preferably cancer patients with oral cancer, to policymakers, and the patients would narrate their story. The pain and agony, the distress they went through when they got cancer. But beyond that, the families and the patients would also talk about the financial distress, how getting cancer was considered contagious and their neighbors would shy away from them, how they would lose their jobs, and because of the distress the family would be in, very often children had to get out of school. You know, the fact is that one person gets cancer, the entire family gets destroyed. So, the victims of tobacco, the patients and the would tell these stories to the policymakers, and you know what? These would really touch their hearts. When I tell you one million people are dying in India every year because of tobacco, it's just a statistic. But when you hear the story of one of these families, it touches your heart. And as you all know, change comes from the heart and not from the head. So we got immense amount of cooperation. The policymakers would ask, you know, okay, what should we do? And that's when we would ask for help in our campaigns. We sensitized politicians, officials, media, and the results were amazing. Everybody started supporting our campaigns. Now, the we started this tobacco-free educational institute campaign from Karnataka and Kerala, and then we developed the model and rolled it out to other states, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. The curve of compliance, and by compliance, we were asking for two things. We were asking that make the campus tobacco-free. No usage of tobacco on the campus. Number two, there is some signage required as per law, and we would say, please put the signage up. Now, the whole logic was that you start this camp asking for something which the law requires. You know, we had already had a law, Cigarettes and Tobacco Products Act, which came out in 2003, which asked for these things. These were things we were asking were as per the law, but it had not happened. All these years, it had not happened. Surveys showed that less than 5% of schools complied to these. There were high court acts, uh, orders, which asked schools and states to put those signages up. It had not happened. But because of our campaign of sensitization and advocacy, we could get the machinery moving. And as you can see from the curve, it would take a few months for doing sensitization and disseminating the guidelines, what has to be done. And then there would be a rapid increase in the compliance. 250,000 schools in the country have become compliant. That's touching about 25 million children's lives. And you know what? The, what has been really encouraging is that the impact has been beyond mere compliance. We have hundreds of photographs of principals getting children pledges. They get hired by this whole you know, uh, compliance uh, issue and they would ask children and teachers to take anti-tobacco pledges. They started organizing other activities, you know, anti-tobacco activities, and that really was very, very encouraging to us. So we started using the same approach of sensitization and advocacy in all the other things which we, you know, which work against tobacco, taxes, no smoking against public places, and we also work on a number of policy issues, from increasing taxes to getting Gutka banned, to getting stricter laws against tobacco, and also getting that 85% pictorial pack warning, which you see on cigarette packets now. All these policy changes were facilitated by this Voice of Tobacco Victims uh, campaign. Now, they have many international and national organizations which have been working on these you know, uh, policy changes. 
the voice of tobacco victims campaign facilitated a lot of these organizations to achieve the same and therefore it was a very encouraging time, you know outcome for us when the global adult tobacco survey of 2017 came out it came out in june and what we find is that in the last 7 years the prevalence in of tobacco use in india has fallen by 6% now that's an amazing figure Across the world, if you can achieve 1% per year reduction in tobacco prevalence, it's good. Now, many states have not, uh, you know, it has not come down. In some states, it has actually gone up. But overall, getting it down by 6% is a very good, encouraging fact. In absolute numbers, the number of people who are not using tobacco today is 8.1 million. But if you normalize for the population increase in the last seven years, if the actual reduction is 55 million lesser number of people using tobacco had prevalence not come down. So, but what has been really encouraging for us is that in the 15 to 17 years age bracket, the relative reduction in tobacco usage is down by 54%. That 6% reduction which I talked about earlier is a 17% relative reduction in so the 15 to 17 years age bracket, it is three times the national, you know, what the uh, national average reduction is. And that is really encouraging to us because going forward, we see the reduction in tobacco prevalence come even faster. Now, what are the lessons we have, I have learned in these campaigns? Number one, you need to connect people emotionally to your cause if you want to bring around change. Number two, the number of the very well and strong, well-funded and strong lobbies, and believe me, the tobacco lobby is one of the strongest in the world, can be beaten by out-of-box solutions. Number three, and this is most important, you know, as you grow up, you will become more and more cynical about people. You think that corruption, bribery, these are the norms of the day, that things don't move unless you fix somebody or some system. But there are a lot of good people out there. There are politicians who will work for the common good. There are officials who will work tirelessly and selflessly for the common good. And most of all, all these doctors, they work against their own professional interests for the good of society. And finally, on a personal note, what I realized was that doing something for society really should be the measure of success rather than the amount of money I make. Thank you.